Ohio was a leader in establishing state institutions to uh, support, to house and educate people with mental and physical disabilities. There was the Deaf School on East Town Street, uh, the Blind School on Parsons Avenue, and on the west side of the city were the uh, mental institutions. And we are going to pull up and visit the Deaf School uh, on East Town Street. We're on East Town Street in downtown Columbus in the Topiary Park, which is the site of the old Ohio State School for the Deaf. It began here in the 1830s uh, with several buildings, and it was an important institution that served people from all over the state who had the disability of not being able to hear. Over time, several buildings were built, but they were all swept away in the 1860s when a large main building was built at the back of the site on the north side. Uh, as time went on and more and more students arrived at the school, they had to build a new educational building that was built in 1899 at the west edge of the park. The Deaf School stayed at the Town Street site until 1959 when it moved to Morse Road where it remains today. That left two large empty buildings still owned by the state of Ohio and for many years the state used them as office buildings. In uh, the 1970s the state vacated these buildings and their future was uncertain. Then in 1981 the 1860s building caught fire and had a lot of damage. During the demolition of that building after the fire, the contractor punched two holes in the front of the school building, I guess thinking he would get the contract to demolish that building as well. But the City Recreation and Parks Department had already accepted the property as a public park and wanted that building preserved, so they stopped the demolition. And Recreation and Parks then uh, developed the Topiary Park, inspired by two park employees who designed the park to represent the painting in the collection of the Art Institute of Chicago, the, the famous pointillist painting by Georges Seurat, Sunday afternoon on the Isle of Le Grand Jard in Paris. The old school building, the 1899 building, had been rehabilitated in the 1980s as an office building. And when that use ended, uh, Christo Ray High School sort of discovered the building, thought this would be a good place, let's put a school in a school building, and that's how it came about that it has returned to its function as a school. This is one of the two main entrances on the east side of the old Deaf School school building. And they're really, really interesting architecturally. The building's style is known as Jacobethan Revival. That's an architectural style that combines English precedents and French precedents and so on. But it's really unique to this building. You'll notice too, the shield up above with the backward D's, D's back to back, uh, standing for deaf and dumb. Now, those are terms we don't use anymore, but they were clinical terms at the time this building was built. So that's a measure of how things change over time. Let's go inside and have a look around. In the renovation for Cristo Rey Columbus High School, a lot of the architectural features of the building were retained intact. Uh, the gym ceiling, the wood, wood ceiling is still original. The wood floors, there are areas that have been patched where wood was damaged or missing. We're in one of the classrooms at Cristo Rey, and I'd like to introduce you to Jim Foley, who's president at Cristo Rey High School. Hi, Jim. Good to see you again Jeff. in this wonderful facility. Jim, clearly this is an old building. How did you create a modern high school out of an old high school? Uh, we wanted to keep it historically accurate, but we also wanted to add to it uh, a modern touch, modern technology to make it an educationally cutting-edge facility. So, for example, on the historic side, uh, the floors when we walked in were horrible, uh, but they've been sanded down, finished, and they look beautiful now, and we're walking on 1899 floors here. Uh, the ceilings had been dropped uh, to a ridiculous point that cut out all the, the beautiful windows that we have in here, and in an educational facility, you want to have windows. So, we raised the ceilings up uh, back to their original height. But then we have modern technology. The entire school is wireless. So technologically, it's a very cutting edge institution in a very beautiful building. Tell us about the Cristo Rey High School, the model of it, how it serves the community. It's different from most high schools, isn't it? Cristo Rey is a uh, college prep school that is designed to be affordable for uh, families that could not, not otherwise afford a good, strong, private uh, college prep education. The unique feature of Cristo Rey is that we have a work-study program. All of the students work five full days a month, and that does two things. On the one hand, uh, it provides the income to support the building, uh, and secondly, what it does is it allows the kids to be in a professional environment uh, and to rub shoulders with professionals and to learn from them and to be mentored by them. And the results are that at Crystal Ray Schools, Throughout the country, every senior at every graduating school has at least one college offer on graduation day. So that's the success story that, uh, that we are now a part of. 
Well, Jim, you've certainly done a great job here taking a building that looked like it didn't have much of a future and really giving it one for the foreseeable future. And it really tells us how important it is that we keep these landmarks in our community, they keep us anchored in time, they give us a sense of place, and they remind us of how important these institutions once were in the state of Ohio.